All right, welcome to uh, Physics 250, Modern Physics, uh, Part 1 of the Photoelectric Effect. So uh, today is all about learning about the apparatus. So what is the photoelectric effect? Basically, it's an experiment that shows light is also a particle. Energy comes in uh, particle-like chunks, basic, uh, the basics of quantum physics. Um, and so these chunks are usually called a photon if we're talking about light. So before this, uh, light was only considered a wave. And so we've talked about calculating energy photons and uh, uh, wavelengths of photons. So let's get into the photoelectric effect. Um, all right, so we're going to spend the next three classes here talking about uh, understanding the photoelectric experiment uh, and what results you would expect if light were a classical wave, uh, what the experiment's results uh, it, what the experimental results actually gave, and, and the, the interpretations of these results. So, uh, so what I want you to do is make sure you record your predictions and compare them to the experiment and then also record the results of the experiment. So uh, at the end of this lecture, I'll give you di uh, direction how to find a computer simulation so you can run some photoelectric experiments. All right, so this is the photoelectric uh, experiment right here. You've got... Uh, a test metal and the, te the, te the electrons in the test metal are uh, ejected off and they can travel across this gap and if they travel across we can get a current and then there's a potential between these two devices. So uh, we can adjust this voltage, um, we shine light on one of the plates and then we make measurements of the current that comes through. So let's understand the, the uh, apparatus in the experiment. So basically we have uh, a resistor and points A and B and a potential, a battery here. And uh, the potential difference between A and B is 10 volts. And it measures the energy and electron gains going from point A to B. All right, so we've got this set up now. Now I take out the resistor. Uh, what is the potential between A and B? I want you to uh, make a prediction. Is it 0, 10 volts, or an infinite number of volts? So pause the podcast, make your vote, and then come back and we'll talk about uh, how to get to the answer. Okay, what is the answer here? What is the potential between A and B? Well, the answer is B here. It's 10 volts. Kirchhoff's rules uh, basically say as you go around the loop, the sum of the voltages have to add up to zero. The only way we can do that is to go around and zero. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to put a resistor in here, and I want what is the current from A to B, across A to B. You have a choice between zero, 5 amps or 0.2 amps. So pause the podcast, make your guess. All right, so what's the answer to this? Well, the answer is 0 amps. Uh, since there's no way for current to flow between A and B, there's no way you can get a current to go through this loop.
All right, so let's talk about um, units right now. All right, so, so far in 153 and 163, we have used a unit of a joule to describe energy. And it's a great unit for macroscopic ideas. But when you're talking about energy of single electrons, joules is inconvenient. It's way too big. So we're going to define a new unit, or an electron volt. We should have already been exposed to this in 163 and 153. And it's basically the kinetic energy gained by an electron when it's accelerated through a 1 volt potential. So you have your 1 volt potential here, and you have the electric field going this way, and the force of the electron that way since the charge is negative. So this force will do work on it. And the change in kinetic energy is equal to the negative change in potential energy. And so we talked about this. The change in potential energy is Q times the change in potential. And uh, we plug in, we put in the charge on the electron. And so what we get is a change in energy of uh, the charge on the electron times one potential, which is equivalent to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, or our new unit, one electron volt. All right, so what's going on in the photoelectric effect? I'm going to start off with an analogy. And it's a swimming pool analogy. Um, the idea is, is um, how do we get water uh, from the pool into the drain and through the pump? Okay, so if no water slashes over the pool, there's no way of water going into the pump. So it uh, doesn't matter if it's a little pump or a big pump, no current will, no water will go through here. Uh, or no current of water will go through. Alright. So if the electrons are stuck inside the metal, you get no current for a, a little voltage or a big voltage. doesn't matter there will be no current depending on the voltage. I mean, if no electrons get out of the metal. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, put a bunch of energy into the water. So it starts sloshing around. And some of it gets uh, to flow through the pump. Uh, and then, we're, uh, and basically, how does it, we do this in the photoelectric effect? Well, we pump energy into the metal by heating it into very hot, and then this gives some electrons energy, um, and some slosh out, and so this would give us a current. Okay. So this is the idea. We have to give energy to electrons to get them out of the metal and start our current. All right, so here's our photoelectric experiment. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a hot plate here. So a few electrons are going to get enough energy to just barely splash out. What I want you to predict is what is the current versus and the current versus battery voltage graph. So you have three graphs, or four graphs to choose from. You have graph A, graph B, graph C, and graph D. So pause the podcast and see if you can figure out what the current versus voltage should be for the photoelectric effect if you heat up one plate. So here's our answer. The answer is C. So here, uh, so let's just explain the graph here. Here the voltage is negative, so the, it's a reverse voltage. No electron should flow across here. Here the voltage is positive. And so look what's happening here. The current versus voltage graph is not a linear graph. This is not Ohm's law. Well, why is it not Ohm's law? Well, let's talk about what can go on. So, basically what happens here is each electron that is popped out of the metal is accelerated uh, more, so it hits the far plate. 
with a higher velocity. Okay? But the definition of current is the number of electrons or charges, and there's a charge on the electron per second. But it happens to be constant because we have the same number of electrons coming off per second. We don't have any more. So the current ends up being constant. And this is usually different when what people think about if you put a potential across something. So we need to pay. And so this created what is referred to as a uh, vacuum tube diode. And it actually works quite well. It was an early form of electronics devices. We don't have any more of those. We have silicon that does that for us now. Or integrated chips. Alright, so, uh, what's going on here? So, let's talk about what happens. So, if light is a classical wave, uh, the prediction that just, uh, basically prediction, it predicts that we just put energy into the plate, so we heat up the plate, and we get a diode current that comes across. A diode type current. Looks like this. Okay? So, it's zero current until you hit uh, until you get the zero voltage, the positive voltage, and then the current remains constant. So, uh, so we heat up the test mess, the test metal with our light, and we get electrons to flow across. All right. So what's happening here? So uh, they believe it should take time to heat up. Okay. Um, so if the light is on longer, we should have more heat, and uh, electrons are, should be coming off faster, i.e. more current. And then we believe uh, the color of the light shouldn't matter. Color distinguishes light by wavelength. That would not help pull electrons off. What's going to help pull electrons off is the electric field in the electromagnetic wave. And the electric field gets changed based on its intensity. So that means at, at how the amplitude of the wave, the greater amplitude, the bigger intensity. Okay. And so that should uh, change everything. So what do we actually see? And what do we think we should see? Well, we think we should see something like this. Uh, we get a little bit of a voltage coming off because it's heating up slowly. And then... As it heats up more, it pops up to here, and we get the constant current. But the current is constant all the way, and it heats up as it's going up. And this is classically, and using classical e and what they think should be happening in the photoelectric. All right, so what have we done so far? Um, we've covered how the apparatus works. Uh, what uh, what would be expected if light is a classical wave, uh, as previous experiments have taught us, like the double slit experiment, uh, what we think should happen is the current versus voltage graph uh, should, should be a step, it's flat, okay? The color of the light should not matter, only the intensity. Uh, it should take some time to heat up. So current is low at first and increases with time. And increasing the intensity should increase the current. That's what we believe. So does that happen? So what we need to do is do the experiment. And, and so uh, you, you need to make your predictions. And what we're going to do is figure out how it depends on intensity and color. So here is a web link you can go, and it will allow you to run this simulation right here we've been looking at. I will also post a link on ACE that you'll allow to, to get to this. And run a couple experiments. See if you can get this predicted graph. And I'll uh, post the next podcast for Friday. Well, thanks for listening. Talk to you later.